today I'm going to be doing a story time. Um, as you can see from the title, Sneaking Friends Into the House. So, I want to say that this was two years ago. Two or three years ago. And these are strictly friends. Well, they're, they're friends. <laughs> and at the time, my brother didn't think that they were. So all my friends, we live in the same neighborhood, right? So all of our bus stops are by each other. Basically, all of our buses would meet up at the same like corner in the same area. We would all get off the bus, stand around, talk, you know, be out there for like an hour or two, not even go home. Well, when we did go home, some people would like come over each other's house. So sometimes all like everybody came over my house. And my mom was at work. My brother, he was living with us at the time. I really don't know where he was at. And everybody would come over. Some of the people were in my videos that used to always come over here. So this particular day, it was me and my cousin. My cousin was living with us. And um, my friend Chris and Micaiah came over, two boys. So my brother left. And as always, we all just in here cooling. I really don't know what we was doing, but we wasn't doing nothing. And my brother left and I would always lock the screen door because I didn't want him to know they was in here because he was going to tell my mom. And if I already asked her and she said no and I did it anyway, obviously it was going to be a problem. So, yeah, so we locked the screen door because I don't think he had a key to the screen door for at first. So every time like we felt him tug on the screen door, we would know like, oh, he's here. We need to get them out the back door, not the front. So... One day, we just all in here. We got the music blasting. We playing the Xbox. I don't know if we was eating. We was just doing, just hanging out, chilling. Nothing much, nothing less, nothing more. And we was just chilling. So we feel the screen door. Well, apparently, from my brother's perspective, now that I know, he heard us stomping on the floor, like trying to run from the living room. We were in the living room, trying to run from the living room where the front door was to like the back or to my room. My cousin tried to play it off and like he looked at the blinds, but apparently my brother seen him and he just thought something was up. He was just always suspicious. And when he walked in here, my cousin was playing my Xbox. I was in the kitchen. I remember because like I was kind of nervous a little bit, but I was in the kitchen. I had a water bottle in my hand and I'm just, you know, drinking the water, walking from the kitchen to my room. It's just literally right there. Two steps. I'm trying to play it off like everything's cool. I'm just drinking water and he's playing a game. Like we ain't doing nothing. The gag was, was Chris and Micaiah was in the closet. We didn't have enough time to get them outside of the back door. So the closet it was, we didn't have no other choice. Like where was they gonna go? I don't know. And my fucking, my closet was tore up before they even went in there. And then after they went in there. Cause like I had recently went shopping and I know my shopping bags were like on the floor in the corner where they was. And them motherfuckers was smashed down. I was like, dang. He walks in here. It's like he's scoping out the house, just trying to find something. Just, he needed, like, some reason to see who was in here. And he was like, what y'all doing? Uh, I know somebody's in here. And we was just looking at him like, well, what are you talking about? You know, trying to play it off. Like, what? Hey, what are you, huh? What are you talking about? He leaves. He leaves. And I just remember, I think the front door was open, but the screen door was like, you know, it's the screen door. So the front door is open. Screen door is locked. The door is just open. He's gone. So he comes back in here. I know he told us he scoped around the whole, like, neighborhood or whatever. So he comes back in here. He comes to my room. I had, like, clothes in my on my chair to my desk. They were just there. They were clean clothes I hadn't put up. They were just piled into my chair. He walks through my, my bedroom door, takes the clothes that's in my chair, and just starts throwing them, yelling. Oh, there's somebody in here. Do, do, do. You know you're not supposed to be doing this. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? You are not my dad. Like, da, 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 da. You're not my mom. You're not my dad. You don't have no authority. You don't have to tell me what to do. Me and you barely talk. So why are you worrying about what I do anyway? That's basically all I was thinking. And I'm just like, who is he? Still to this day, sometimes. Like, he don't tell me what to do and stuff because I'm practically grown. But if he got, like, something to say or is he trying to suggest something i'm still just like who are you my cousin is sitting on the bed still playing the game we still just acting it all out meanwhile makaya and chris is in the closet scared for their life i know this for a fact 
he grabs me, pins me on the wall next to the closet. So we're literally by the right side door of the closet. I got two doors on the closet. You can just open it like that. We're right there where they're at. So he's constantly like, he's not banging me against the closet. I'm on the wall. He has me pinned to the wall like this, talking in my face. I swear y'all, I was like, ooh, hit me. I want you to hit me so I can just kill your ass. I swear to God, you know, you got that adrenaline rush. Like, or if it's somebody you don't like, you're like, I want this bitch to run up and touch me. I want her to touch me. It was kind of like that with him and I was so freaking ready but i was just like get off me and da, da 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 and my cousin he tries to come over and help like get my brother off of me like he's trying to grab him off of me my brother stiff arms my cousin literally as he's walking up to him he's just like move bitch. he just pushes his ass and i'm like uh-uh so he lets me down he walks out mad my brother is mad yelling like we didn't give him any reason there's no evidence of anybody being in here but he walks out mad instantly. I goes to the kitchen and I grabs a knife because I'm ready to kill at this point. Nigga, you got me fucked up. You got me pinned on the wall and shit. We didn't give you no reason to suspect anything, but apparently you know everything. So he just leaves. That's all we hear. Boom, the door closes. He's out. He's gone. Instantly, I grabs that knife. I grabs the house phone at the time. I done dialed 911 and I done handed it to my cousin. My cousin gets the phone, looks at it, hangs it up, and sits it, <laughs> sits it back down on my bed. And I'm just like, bruh. So I just remember, I walk off, I go to the restroom, I close the door, I lock the door. I'm mad, I'm crying, I'm frustrated, I'm angry. Especially since I had called my mom, I told her what was going on. And, you know, mind you, like I said, she was not home, she was at work, and she was on her way home, actually. And around the time she was very sick, I think she had pneumonia. She had walking pneumonia, she said, and she didn't know why she was sick, but she had recently went to the doctor around that time and she found out she had pneumonia. And she was just like weak about it. And I just felt like, I guess, I felt like she didn't care when I told her. She's just like, Shell, I'm sick and tell him this and y'all doing too much. And I'm just like, who? Basically, I'm like, it's not my fault. You acting like you don't care. You're not gonna do nothing about your son pinning me on the wall trying to get violent and shit and i just felt like she didn't care but also i guess i needed to think about her and how like she just came from work the second job at that she's tired it's like 10 at night she, like she's sick she wants to go to bed eat some soup or something but you know i was just i was mad at the world at the time and i was in the restroom crying so austin he goes and checks to see if the coast is clear he still got the headset on, still got the, the game remote in his hand, the controller. And he's checking the front door. He's looking at the blind, seeing if my brother's gone. So he's like, yeah, cool, y'all good. We let him out of the closet. They take off my back porch, literally. Unlock the door, hurry up. <laughs> they jump off the porch and they're gone. They said they ran all the way to like this pop machine we got. And that's like, I don't know how many streets over, but it's like straight down, all the way down. And you got to hit the corner. So what we heard was Chris, or yeah, it was Chris Makaya. Chris said that my brother drove to his house, knocked on the door, and I think his mom answered the door. Chris's mom answered the door. And I think, I don't know what my brother was saying, but he was just basically like, uh, your son was over at my house when he wasn't supposed to and stuff like that. And I don't know who my brother was trying to be. I don't know why he acted the way he did as if he was supposed to because he wasn't obligated to do any of that. He never really watched me. My mama didn't make that a priority for him. So I don't really get why he did that as if, oh, mama ain't here, so let me take charge. No, that's not your job. Yeah, he no. drove to Chris's house. Chris's mama opened the door. She ended up calling Chris like, where are you at? Chris and Micaiah, they're still outside. And I guess, I don't know, I forgot what Chris told his mom, but he was just like, oh, we went over the house without permission or something like that. Basically, he was like, yes, ma'am, too, just to get it, you know, the conversation over with. And she was talking to him. He did not go to Micaiah's house. Little did he know, Micaiah literally lived right there by Chris across the street. But I guess he didn't know that. I don't know. He didn't go to his house. And Chris and Micaiah, I don't know. While they was in there and I was pinned on the wall, we really thought that door, that closet door was going to open up and boom, they was going to be right there. But that's the thing that my brother or my mom still don't know is that Chris and Micaiah were in the closet the whole time. 
So they thought I snuck them in here and got them out. No, we didn't have time to do that. They were literally in there with the whole scene going on. They was just in there. And so I was upset. I came out crying. Me and Austin ended up taking a walk, or my cousin Austin, we ended up taking a walk outside. And as we're taking a walk, we see my mom. She's coming down the street to come home. And we just kept walking. Because at that point, I'm mad at you. I'm mad at him. I'm mad at the world. All of that. And by the time nighttime come, we come in the house, take a shower and all, you know, getting ready for bed or whatever we was doing. The police show up. Late as hell, but they show up because, you know, if you call 911 and hang up, they can call you back. They know your number. They can trace where you're at. They show up an hour later, I guess. That's, and then my mom and brother and cousin, we were all here. They told them nothing was going on. Basically, the police leave. At the same time, my brother comes in here and he, like, mocks the fact that I called him. Oh, what was the police going to do? Uh, you try to call the police. Like, you know, somebody try to mock you and stuff. And it just got to me a little bit because it's like, why are you mocking the fact that I felt like I was in danger or something? And I called for help. The help was denied. And you think it's funny? But, like, he ain't, he wouldn't, like, put his hands on me, do none of that. He's not that type of monster. I don't really know because I ain't as close with him. But still, I don't think he's like that. But that's just how I seen it coming off as. I ain't going to make him out to be a bad person or whatever. But it's just how it felt and how the whole scene was. And everybody just basically brushed it off. And I feel like I held a grudge on him for a good minute. He was always wondering why I was always mad, angry, and being evil. Or just why I didn't like him. And I, my mom would tell me he would cry about stuff like that. That I didn't like him. I want to talk to him. And I didn't care. I really didn't because of the whole situation and how I felt about him before that. We barely talked when we were younger. I feel like we was closer than now. But after that situation, I was like, I am good on that. And I appreciate my cousin for trying to help me too, even though it kind of didn't work out. But I was ready to stab a nigga, get a nigga to go to jail, mad at my mom. I really wanted to yell in her face, like, damn, you just really gonna let this happen? like. But it's all over assumptions, which were true, but we didn't give him, like, any reason to know that. There was no shoes left, no coats that weren't ours left out. We weren't, like, doing nothing. Supposedly, he just heard footsteps and seen my cousin look out the blinds. And just, he went off from there. Monday through Friday, we go to school. So everybody came in my house right after, you know, we got out the bus. It was probably, like, 2.40. And we'd all be in here cooling different days. And we would always still lock in screen doors. So there's been different times when different people was in here or everybody. But it was nothing like that. We was just on some chilling stuff. And he just took it out of proportion. He just made it more than what it was. That's literally how I look at it. So I am good on that. I hope you all enjoyed my story time. I'm trying to give y'all more story times. But the way I'm set up and the way y'all know I'm set up. I can barely remember stuff, frankly, because, um, yeah, you know. And follow my Instagram, m.chxl. Follow my writer's page, too. I've been posting more on there because I had stopped because of different things that I've been doing. But the writer's page is Marshall Says. Go see what I have to say because there is a lot. And just stay tuned for more videos. Like, comment, and subscribe. And have a good day. I'm out. <laughs> we